It's the same exact thing. When you get a realtor.com lead, what do you, it's the first thing you do, Casey? What do you tell your team to do the first thing that you would do when you get a realtor.com or Zillow lead? Try and set the appointment. By doing what? What's the first movement? Oh, introducing yourself. How? Hey, this is Casey Stopo. With no, your... no, 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 no. How do you contact them? Oh, you give them a call. So all we're doing, Casey, all we're doing is we're just buying contact information of random people in our market. What's the difference in that and just calling property owners? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Road to 10,000, 10,000 Real Estate Agents. That's a that's a team that's going to happen between me and my guy Juan here, Juan Carlos. Bella Dici, right? Bella Dici. Like, Bella Dici. Let, let, let's go with that one. You're getting closer and closer every time. <laughs> but I want to know like the nationality of that, that name. All right. So check this thing out. Baronetti is my last name, right? Okay. I'm Colombian. Both my parents are Colombian, but Baronetti stems from the Basque region in Spain. You know where the Basque region is? No, no. I don't know Spain. It's right between Spain and France. So okay. technically, I'm French. How close is that to Italy? That's a good question. I really don't know. That's what we need to know right there. That's Hold what on. we got to find out. Okay. So what's it called? It's called the Basque. B-A-S-Q-U-E. And then uh, that's where my last name stems from. Really? Let's check this yeah. sucker out. By the way, if you're tuning in, we have 644 agents as of March 10th. The goal is to get to uh, 750 by what May? And uh, are you kidding me, bro? Is that a joke? <laughs> Be conservative by May. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, sorry. You guys are crushing it. Huh? Sorry. Let's see, 750. You said you're 650. 644. Okay, so 100 more agent. That's at the end of March. End of March. End of March will be at 750. Oh, well, yeah, it depends, yeah. Dude, we have you the aggressive are numbers and we have the conservative numbers. Okay, Casey, look, this is a great example of the way you shouldn't be. Okay, just look at <laughs> one and, and just see how he answers questions and thinks about stuff and realize. Do the opposite. Yeah, just do the exact opposite of everything Juan does. Yeah, dude, that boss country is real close to Italy, man. I knew it. You know we're opening up in Italy, right? Are we? Yeah, I think I think we'll be there in the next thirty days. So uh, if we got some Italian real estate agents on the line, shoot yeah. Rick, give me a DM. Like, that's the awesome. thing is, is I know you have plenty of family there in Italy. No. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Casey, listen to me, bro. Yeah. This guy, okay, has a complex. All right, he's got a he's got a Latino middle name and an Italian. Okay, it's he says Bosque, right? It came from Italy, bro. And it was like, I'm the Latino agent, right? But I look Italian. Trust me, man. Like he's got a complex and he's still trying to figure it out. We're bringing Grant Cardone on the, on the show and like, and probably like mm, 45 days or so. I'm going to, I'm going to see if he can figure it out. Cause I, I sure can't. We'll yeah, have him put it to the test. Funny. We'll see what happens. Casey, what's up, man? Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks for having me guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, Casey Stapa. So tell us about yourself, man. Wait, 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 wait. Stapa, you're going to butcher his last name too? Come on. It's what, what is it? Stopa. Stopa? Yeah, it's actually- I'm the king of just making up how names sound. <laughs> <laughs> like I just, I say them how I want them. I don't know. Okay, Stopa, right? Yeah, yep. Okay, nice, nice. Tell everybody who you are, how long you've been selling, uh, what market you're in, what company you're with. Give us some background here. Got it. All right. So, uh, yeah, my name is Casey Stopa. Um, I'm a real estate agent with Yellow Brick Real Estate, right? We're based out of Connecticut. We've got a few different locations in Connecticut. We've got uh, Milford, Connecticut, Fairfield, Stanford, and Brantford. I also have a team, Stopa Realty Group. You can look us up on Instagram, Stopa Realty Group. And I've been selling homes. I've been selling real estate full-time since uh, 2018, since the start of 2018. So this is my fourth full-time year in the business. Got you. How big is your team? What's your team scenario? Uh, I've got nine people on my team right now. So you're Casey, the team what, leader? What, what was your, uh, your production last year for, uh, for sales within you and the whole entire team? The whole team, we did $35 million and I did 20 of that. So... We're still a little green right now, but people are starting to pick it up big time. So we're hoping to have a big year this year. Listen, man, I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit. You're actually three years in. This is going to be your third year. You started 2018? 
Yeah, the start of 2018. So, so I'm three years in. This is my fourth year. You're crushing it, dude. The fact that you've already assembled a team, you have the foundation set, you guys knocked out 35 million last year. And the fact that you're in such a hard market over there in Connecticut, you're, you're going to take off, man. It's just a matter of time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. so Casey, dude, let me ask you about the team thing, man. Like, so now you've, you started a team, you got nine people, you're doing 35 million. How much are you enjoying this team atmosphere? I like it a lot, you know, because I think it kind of holds me accountable as a team leader to kind of work harder. You know what I mean? And it's also like my team, honestly, a lot of it is people that I know, like most of it is people that I know, like my friends who wanted to get into the business. My sister just joined the team. So the reason I started the team was because, you know, I started doing real estate. I was young and, you know, I started selling a lot of houses. My first year, I think I sold, I sold 33 homes my first year. So people kind of saw that. And they wanted to be a part of it. So I was like, all right, you know what? Let me just start my own team then. And, you know, it's it's fun. I, I mean, I, I like having, you know, working in a team environment versus just being a single agent. So you love you love the team versus single agent because it, you feel like it holds you accountable. That's one that's one reason, right, that I heard. And it, it keeps me motivated, too. And, and it's just uh, the whole team atmosphere, like, you know, just being able to do things with the team. We, we have monthly goals and monthly rewards. Like, we'll go. You know, if we hit a goal, like for instance, January, we made a goal. We hit that goal. I took everyone snowboarding in February. And then this month we have a goal to hit. If we hit it, we're going to go paintballing next month. So stuff like that, you know, just to keep it fun, work hard, play hard. Yeah, no, I get it, man. I get it. That's, that's cool. I think that like, there's so many different ways to, uh, to succeed, like to skin a cat. Really. I tried the team thing. It wasn't for me whatsoever. I'm still a single agent, like <laughs> Ricky, like I'm still a single agent. I still... Yeah show my own properties, do my own thing and all that stuff. I love to hear people that have teams and I love to hear like the dynamics of it and kind of what all goes on behind the scenes and kind of go deeper with it because it's something I don't do. You know what I mean? So I'm always interested, you know, of how it all works. So that's cool, man. What, uh, what do you think is the cornerstone of like, if somebody wanted to start a team, cause later you started a team after just a couple of years in the business. Now you have nine agents, you're doing 35 million a year, which is amazing, you know, to be at that place at this point in your career, what would you tell somebody who, you know, wants to start a team, like some of the mistakes you made or like a few pointers, if you will, you know, about building a team? Yeah. Um, so if you want to build a team, you know, most people say to hire an admin first. I didn't do that. I just started taking on agents. Um, so that's where I kind of screwed up. I think I should have hired an admin first just to, you know, help keep everything organized. I still don't really have an admin for the team. I have like a transaction coordinator that helps me with my transactions. But um, I would say definitely start with with hiring an admin, do it the right way, because, you know, I, I it, it was a lot, you know, like the past couple of years trying to trying to build, um, trying to build my team and also do my own production at the same time. There were times where I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and you know, I didn't have the best management skills. So I would say probably look into, you know, how to be a, a good manager. Um, and you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I had a lot of stuff to work on, but I, I would say just, if you, if you want to do something, just go for it, you know? What Love ends it, up right? happening, uh, Ricky, what ends up happening with a lot of teams, like I have a team myself and um, everyone's always thinking like, oh, I went out there. I got a couple of listings. I'm getting uh, lots of buyers calling me. Let me go out there and hire a buyer agent. It's what I did. And yeah. the issue with that is that when you hire a buyer agent, well, you become their administrative assistant, right? Because the second that person goes ahead and gets two deals on the contract, someone's got to do their paperwork. So um, a lot of agents kind of have this misconception that when you start getting a lot of listings, you have to scale in the form of a team. And uh, there's two types of agents. There's no wait agents a minute. Like you have to. They get this misconception like you have to go out there and hire agents to work for you. And you know, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're you, saying you, that other people say that you have to. Exactly. And and now they have this pressure to go out there and hire people. And a lot of people aren't good managers. They're not good leaders. Uh, people like Casey and myself. I have eight agents. He has nine. But we have a gratification out of helping others. You know, it's more like a small family. We're building a culture. And yeah. even though we probably know we could go out there and make more money on our own with just three assistants behind us, um, it's kind of like the big picture of having like your own mini business with uh, with other people in involved along for the ride. So, so if you're, you're listening, saying it's not about yeah. the money, it's about building relationships. 
I think so. Doesn't it always go back to that? I've heard that somewhere. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I knew that I, like I said, my friends were getting into the business and I knew I was going to be helping them. So I was like, let me start a team, you know, and now, now I'm kind of using it to start delegating like smaller deals so that I can focus on a higher price point. Right. So now I'm starting to do that a lot more. Um, but it's really just helping, you know, helping agents that are on my team grow their businesses, just like I did. And I know that, you know, in the future, it's all going to, you know, help me out because like you said, it's all about building relationships. Right, right, right. So like, um, like I delegate buyers that are in lower price points or that I don't want to deal with. Like there's an agent in my office that I give them to. There's my dad, he's an agent. I'll give him some buyers if, if I want to, I don't have to have a team, you know what I mean? To do that and really have the same benefits and not have to worry about this person's livelihood kind of deal. That's one thing I didn't like about the team is like, I felt responsible, you know, like it was up to me. Like I feel so, I feel so less responsible on the coaching side because I'm just like, here's how you do it. And then it's up to them to go do it. But when it's like an agent on my team, like a localized traditional team, I just felt like it was such, and then when these agents didn't make it or succeed at the level that they wanted to, cause I brought on about 12 agents over a year and a half. I went through about 12 and a half, 12 agents in a year and a half, you know, and I probably, at one point I probably had like three or four agents at one time. And, um, you know, like it didn't work for me cause like it was taken away from my business and then, you know, managing them. And then, you know, it was like stressful worrying about their drama and stuff. And then like trying to train them and everything else. It just, I just, I'm not built to do that kind of work. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love the coaching side of it. I love the recruiting side with the XP, like building that team. Yeah. Um, I think that's the like way of the future with it because it takes all the, the liability and like the broker responsibility, the expenses. That's another thing, like the team members, I was having to pay their expenses for certain things, you know? And I know a lot of team leaders, they buy leads and stuff. So that's an expense for every team member you have. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't want any expenses. I would rather, I would rather just sell 40 million on my own and just deal with past clients and referrals and go build other businesses. You know what I'm saying? That's my thing. I don't want to have to deal with people, but you know what I'm saying? I'm, that's the way I'm built. Like Casey and Juan, like you guys have mastered, you know, building a, you know, a massive team. Cause like Juan, you're going to, are you going to hit a hundred million this year? My goal is to hit a hundred million. We did 8.3 last month. Um, but the way my team is designed, I probably worked five hours last month, like the entire month. So well, Juan, it, I mean, come on, man, we're not, you know, like you just had to throw that in there, didn't you? You know, it's just and, like, and it's, it's important to know. I'll tell you why. Because when people start their team, it's not like you're going to get your leverage or your time back ASAP. The first time I started my team three years ago, I worked from 40 hours to 80 hours a week until I brought in that manager on the marketing side, on the operation side, the staff. So the team perk is that you get your time back long term. But if you're not willing to put in the two, three years to kind of get to that point, the team's going to cost you more time and money than anything else. So I'm trying to talk people away from starting a team unless they're in it for the long term and they need that culture around them to, to really thrive. The thing I don't like about it is that mainstream when teams started to become the thing, like in the late nineties, I want to say, or early two thousands, uh, whenever team mega teams started coming on the scene, it was like, this was for people that were getting in retirement that wanted to kind of step out of the business a little bit and then, you know, and so then like new agents were like, oh, well, I'm going to build a team and step out of the business. And it was creating a scenario where people were thinking that this was going to be the cornerstone to making more money doing less. And for me, that's never a good recipe of, for success. Like how, you know, like, oh, yeah, I always want to do more in less time. I want to do I want to produce more with less effort, not so that I can do less, but so that I can produce more because I'm never going to put forth less effort in terms of hours I put in per day. You know what I mean? But that's what I like about what you do because you're building other businesses. You're not just doing five hours a day, five hours a week, selling your 8 million and then going to the house. <laughs> your, your schedule's full all day long, building other businesses and doing other things. That's what I like about it to a certain extent. Um, so that's what I think is interesting. And I mean, at, in Casey's level, I wouldn't think that you are taking any time off because of this, right? No, no, not at all. I mean, I, 
I put more time in, you know, I'm trying to keep growing and growing and growing. And, you know, I'm not one to, you know, I, I don't even, I don't really have any plans to retire from this business at all. I love this business. I work 24 um, seven. So, I mean, on it, for me, it's just, I want to keep growing each year. So now that I can start delegating a lot of these leads to the guys on my team, so I can keep doing more volume. Um, that's, that's mostly what it's for, you know, like I want to keep working. It's, it's not for me to, you know, be able to hang out and, you know, go on vacation every week and, you know, just make money off of my teammates. It's, it's, it's so that I can do more and build like a legacy. And, and, and it's cool to work alongside other people to get towards the same goal. Cause uh, I'm just that type of person where if you leave me as a single agent and I have to make these calls by myself and I have no one to speak to every single day, like shit, I'm going to be freaking either bored or, or depressed that like, I have no one to like cheer me along. So, uh, there's this whole culture where like you, you build like a I mean, that's, family. that's what, that's what a therapist is for, bro. It sounds like you need some <laughs> straight therapy, bro. You know what I mean? Like they have people that, that, you know, you can pay for that. You don't have to, you know, I, I take, feel you take I feel on it. an entire organization. Plus I have an assistant, right? I have an assistant. I can say, Hey, Christy, you know, like these calls are sounding <laughs> cool, huh? She's like, Oh yeah. It's not like you, like you guys take, you guys think that us single agents are like in a dungeon with like leprechauns and stuff, like in a dark <laughs> heated room, you know, like making calls, like, you know, under the earth or something, man. Like we're normal people too. Okay. This is a good uh, comparison podcast, like, like, like starting a team versus single agent. And there's so many misconceptions. Like I personally think if you want to make more money, stay a single agent, yeah. bring on a couple of assistants and you just become the best closer there is. The second you go out there and try start recruiting people to, and training them, they're never going to be as good as you. Why? Because you're always consistently getting better. So you have to understand that the reason that you transition to a team is to help others and that you're going to be in a position where essentially you're a manager now. You're no longer the guy down there closing the deal for them. You're no longer on the ground if you're a true team leader. It's one of those things where you're out there supporting your troops to help them get to their next level and you find fulfillment in that. But if you find like you have this urge to go in there and do it yourself, well, shit, you're going to be back to the single agent life with an army behind you saying, feed me, feed me, feed me. So uh, I think it's a personality thing. Yeah, it's definitely a personality thing. I think you have, you know, um, it's right and left, man. You got people that, you know, they just decide, Hey, you know, I, I, I need some emotional support. You know, I need some people around me to make me feel good, you know? And then you got the single agent guys, you know, the real, the strong characters of the world that really step <laughs> up and aren't scared to the do the work. Wolves. And yeah. 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 Not scared. Not scared. Yeah, no, no, that's good stuff, man. That's funny. The team energy is super helpful, though. Definitely. I love the team energy. I'm, I'm going skiing next week with my team. Ricky, I, I don't know what you're going to do, man, but I, I got a nice little uh, little group coming with me. You could come join if, if, if you loan, loan agents. No, bro. There. Listen, no I don't do team <laughs> ski trips, okay? All right. I, I, I'll tell you what I do, man. I take my team for a skiing trip, right? I go to the top of the hill, and who is it going to be? Me. <laughs> right? I go up there. I'm, I'm snowboarding down that sucker. And I'm like, this is what it's all about, bro. Nobody to run into, you know, no, no distractions, no, no obstacles, you know? No, it's good stuff, man. It's good stuff. I love, I love the comparison of it. I am not against team building at all. I tell people like, if I were going to do a team right now, it would be an incredible team. Cause I know how to build it now. I know how to set expectations. The first time I tried to do it, I didn't understand a lot about the business itself. I didn't understand how to build a team. I didn't understand setting expectations and putting systems in place. And a lot of the stuff that I've learned since then, you know, I could build a great team right now. I could have a long time ago. I just, I guess by the time I realized how to actually build the team the right way, by that, by the time that happened, I'm doing 40 mil. I literally, you'll love this. I'm literally doing 40 mil a year, working about five hours. Did you say five hours a week? Five hours a week, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm literally doing my 40 mil, and it's about five hours, five hours a week because it's all past kinds of referrals. Yep. Like everything comes to me. I'm just processing deals. I might go show a house. I go to a listing appointment, talk on the phone to a couple people, and you know, close eight deals a month and very effortlessly. So, I mean, if you're at that stage in your business, you know, it makes zero sense to start complicating everything. 
you know, I was like, all right, you know, I'm just going to crush this YouTube thing and this Instagram thing and, you know, become and a then, global uh, brand. And then Casey, how long did it take you? Like from the time you started the team till the time that you realized like, okay, like now this thing's kind of like running and uh, I got the hang of this. Like how long did it take you to actually lay the foundation for the team itself? Probably took like a year. Cause I, we, I started with just like two agents that, um, you know, were my friends and, you know, I was just helping them with some deals, helping them with whatever they needed help, needed help on. And, uh, and then, you know, I got a couple more agents that next year. And then I started to realize like, okay, well, you know, I probably got to step it up and put a, put a little bit more effort into building this team, um, you know, and structuring it. So then we started to, to do like, now we do like Monday morning meetings. So every Monday at 8 a.m. we have a meeting and we go over all of our numbers and do some training. And then Thursday nights we have call nights where we all get together and just make calls, um, you know, whether it's past clients, you know, calling expired FISBOs structured differently every week. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it took, it took about a year to, to really, for me to really take it seriously. And those systems, hiring those people to kind of support your team, like it's expenses, it's time. Yeah. Um, I don't recommend doing it if, if you don't have a year to put out there. I, I feel like there's this idea where you hire the team and boom, you get your time back, but no, it's kind of the opposite. No, it is the opposite. And then I start after, after like a year and I started really buying, like I started buying leads for my team and that's kind of like my biggest, biggest expense for the team are, are the leads for sure. What, uh, what kind of leads are you buying and how much are they? I spend, I, I buy a lot of realtor.com leads. I was buying Zillow's. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I just cut off the Zillow's recently, but mm -hmm. really Zillow and realtor.com. Uh, is there like a, uh, a one that's better th than the other or what did you experience in your market? So Zillow's are definitely like, Zillow's are good leads. You know, they're, I feel like people, uh, people who go on Zillow are, you know, they have to fill out, I think, fill out a little bit more information online. Um, and they, those have seemed to be more quality leads than the realtor.coms, but you can get more realtor.coms for less. So it's just like a volume game with the realtor.com leads. So, you know, a realtor.com lead might come in and, you know, if you can't get in touch with them right away, maybe in a couple of weeks, you'll be able to get in touch with them and work that lead versus the Zillow's you get like connected with right away. And then, you know, they probably like on Zillow, um, sometimes they come in as like a tour request. So you can like, they're scheduling a tour right through Zillow and you can go out and meet them that way. So we do a lot of buyer, like, like that's kind of our whole business model. So just working with a lot of buyer leads. Why did you, why did you quit buying Zillow leads just because the price is less to get realtor.com? Yeah, it's a lot more expensive. Um, and you get a lot less leads and, mm -hmm. you know, I started to realize that, but they're good lead leads. Yeah, no, they're good leads. and you know, there's nothing against buying them, but I just started to realize that like, um, a lead's a lead at the end of the day. And it's just someone who's interested in buying, you know, interested in buying and, you know, whether you get them right there, you get them a further down the line, at least it's someone that you can work that was interested in buying at one point. So. Got it. Got yeah. it. Ricky, have you, have you ever spent the dollar on online leads? Oh, you know it, bro. As soon as, uh, as soon as Zillow and Trulia came out, you know, Zillow and Trulia, Trulia was, uh, Trulia was competitor with Zillow um there for a minute and then zillow bought them um but yeah yeah i was spending i forget how much i spent uh one year like i did it for one year i believe um i think i spent like 20 or 30 grand in a year or something like that just because okay. i was like nice you know yeah and i uh i got right up out of there man i got right up out of there quick you know i i tried everything man i've tested everything out i could you know like i say man i've tried the team thing you know it's not like i talk about this stuff and i'm like oh don't do this and don't do that this is just how i do it and it's not from me just thinking hey uh don't do this and don't do that i've actually tried these things and i i, I go ba everything i talk about is based on experience it's not like something i heard from somebody or watched here or, or it's like experience you know yeah. um of how i built the business and what i do and all that stuff but yeah yeah i bought some leads for a little bit um very interesting you know very so so yeah. interesting story probably a year ago it was about a year yeah a little it was like february last year so a little over a year ago you know my dad's like hey you know like i had the zillow guy call me and he said hey you know we uh 
we're, you know, we're nothing like we used to be like these leads are like more qualified. We do this, we do that. They're, you know, they're, it's a better this. And, and dad was like, let's give it a shot. And I'm like, let's do it. Like, we'll throw 300 a month at it just for a, a zip code to see what happens, you know, for six months to see what you think and just give all the leads to you and see if you close anything. I'm all about it, you know? And, um, you know, we'll see what it do. And, and it was the same thing as the before, bro rental clients and non-answers and stuff like that. I think he, he, I think he got one or two good leads out of it with the six month period, but you got to spend more than 300 bucks. I get all that. But at the same time, man, it, it the dude sold us a bag of dust, man. It, it was, it was the same quality as before. I, I, I really wanted to do it just to experiment. Right. Yeah. Just like, I like to know stuff. I'll spend money just to figure stuff out. And, you know, I wanted to know if there really was a difference in the Zillow leads I got day one, 2013, maybe is when I did it, something like that, um, to 2020. So, and there wasn't a difference. I promise you there wasn't a difference in, in the lead quality. So yeah, man, listen, a lead is a, any human in your market. All right. What they're doing, Casey, is they're literally selling you random people in your market's contact information for an ungodful amount of money. That's what realtor.com is doing to you, right? That's true. <laughs> right. What you should be doing is just buy Red X, uh, uh, Geo Leads, expires for sale by owners. All the money you spent on realtor.com, just buy Red X because you probably have it, right? I don't have a red X now. See, dude, like scrap realtor.com. Oh, Thank you. That's hard, man. Come on. Is it it's the, the same exact us? thing. It's the same exact thing. When you get a realtor.com lead, what do you, it's the first thing you do, Casey? What do you tell your team to do the first thing that you would do when you get a realtor.com or Zillow lead? Try and set the appointment. By doing what? What's the first movement? Oh, introducing yourself. How? What do you, Hey, this is Casey Stopo. With no, your- no, 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 no. But well, but how do you contact them? Oh, you give them a call. Okay, you call them. And how quick do you have to call them once you get the lead? It's right away, as quickly as okay, possible. Okay, immediately, right? Yeah. So all we're doing, Casey, all we're doing is we're just buying contact information of random people in our market. That's all you're doing, okay? Yeah. What I'm saying is, is why don't you think of yourself, what's the difference in that and just calling property owners? The difference is that they're putting their information in online to go see a certain property. Uh So you know that they're looking to buy a home. Everybody's looking. Everybody, every single human in the market is thinking about doing something. I, yeah, I agree with you. Okay. So we agree there. So so, so Ricky, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to back Casey up. I do both. Right. And I look at you calling people. um, How do I explain it? There's always the chance that when you get the Zillow lead, they've already identified themselves. They've raised their hand, right? Like a for sale by owner would, like, hey, I want to buy, right? And there's always the chance that when you call that Zillow lead, obviously they're not going to be ready. And then you're right back to square one. You're better off calling the Red X leads. However, if you're a smart agent, you put that lead in your database. And now instead of Zillow selling it back to two, three months when they are ready to buy, you go ahead, you nurture it, and you follow up with them when they're ready. And boom, now you got a buyer lead. So I think it works both ways, but I think where a lot of agents mess up is they get these Zillow online leads, whatever it may be, and they don't convert them right out the gate and then boom, they throw them out. And then what happens? They go back on Zillow two months later and they sell them back to you. That's an issue in my opinion. It's yeah. the same thing, bro. Like I'm calling property owners, getting their information and, and put them in my database and nurturing them until they do something. Yep. What's the difference? No, that, I, that one's I, hard, man. Huh? <laughs> it's the same thing. No, I'm saying what's the <laughs> difference? The work, I'm telling, I agree with you. I mean, oh, no. I, I think we should do both, you know? I, I think that in order to be successful in real estate, you don't need to just focus on one thing. I mean, a lot of people do, of course, but, you know, there's so many ways to get business. And the good thing about the leads is they're usually coming in, right? So it's like, you don't have to be prospecting all day. Um, so you could prospect by calling for sale by owners, by calling expires. And then if the lead comes in, you get it on the phone and you try and convert it. No, a hundred percent. Listen, I'm not disagreeing with what you do at all. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand. I like to understand the inside of people's psychology behind what they're doing and why they're doing it. And I like to try to understand, you know, what I do. Like, am I, am I doing something wrong? Am I missing something? You know what I mean? Like the way I see it, it's like, if you look at pre foreclosures, expires for sale by owners, go back two years worth of expires, 
Um, you know, you got a folder full of them. Hey, I saw your house was on the market a year ago. Whatever happened with that? Cool. Where'd you move to? Do you like it there? What can you, what are you going to do next? You got an agent. Boom, boom, boom. It's, it's all the same stuff. It's just yeah. like when a lead comes in, we're calling them and talking to them. Yeah. If you want to add it to what you're doing, great. Like you telling me, let's prospect and then call the lead when it comes in. That sounds amazing, right? If that's something that you want to do, yeah. but do you, do you guys prospect? Uh, we prospect through a lot of our leads pretty much. Okay. But through the leads. Old... You're basically calling the buyer leads back. Yeah, exactly. So we go gotcha. through the buyer leads, but I mean, we have a lot coming in, you know, so. Do, do any of the agents focus on uh, for sub by owners, circle prospecting expires, anything like that? Not really, to be honest. To be honest, we're uh, like my team right now, we're, you know, we, sh we need to start going after listings now because of how the market is. And we're realizing that. Right. So we're, trying to switch it up a little bit but you know honestly the past couple of years we've just mostly been focusing on buyers I, I think i think it's pretty incredible that you've had as much growth as you had just with that one lead source because when you guys go to expand into a second or a third lead source like what ricky's talking about yeah. you guys are basically going to double up in production so there's just so much left of, uh, of meat on the bones for you guys to go after especially if that's the only thing you guys been doing you know that's i mean yeah so that's not the only thing we've been doing though another th so so when I got started in, in real estate, like the way I got it, my, I got my license in Boston, right? Okay. Um, originally, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I was like, let me, let me go to Boston and get my real estate license, right? So I got my real estate license in Boston. I stayed there for a summer and I didn't sell anything, didn't rent anything. I pretty much just partied all summer. I was 21 years old. So I racked up all this credit card debt and... I had to come home. So I came home and it was pretty much, I was either going to continue doing real estate or I was going to start a landscaping business because my family's just like, you know, it's all, my family's all like, my dad was in the army, uh, you know, firefighters and landscapers. Right. So that's kind of what I thought I was going to do. Right. So I decided I was going to start the landscaping business. So I got a couple clients and it was like one morning, Woke up at like 6.30, went to go put the lawnmower on the truck. It was like 30 degrees out. And I was just like, screw this. Like, I'm, this is not my life. I don't want to be doing this. Like, I knew I, I had more potential than that. And like, uh, always had a good work ethic. So I decided to, to do real estate, you know. And, um, and I contacted my sister's, uh, my sister's best friend's fiance. And he was working for a company called Yellow Brick. And they were just starting up. So I met with the owner of Yellow Brick. His name's Thomas Pepco. And, um, and like, I kind of hit it off with him instantly. And I hung my license in Connecticut. I had to get the reciprocity from Massachusetts, but I hung my license in Connecticut with him. And, um, and I started doing real estate for a little bit. And then, so I, so he, he owns my real estate company, but he's also a mortgage guy. Right. So what he did he's the vice president of total mortgage. Um, and he started a real estate company. So I saw what he was doing. I saw how much money he was making, you know, drove a nice car and everything. I was like, I want that life. So I went out and I got my mortgage license. So that's what I did all 2017. I was doing mortgages in 2017. Um, so you have the background in finance too. Yeah, exactly. So I, I started doing mortgages and what they did was they, they just threw me in a call center and I started making calls to leads like, you know, 300, 400 leads a day I was calling. That's what Ricky does in, in a morning, right? <laughs> did 300 calls a morning? Exactly, bro. This morning did 305. Jesus. Look, listen, bro. You, you guys can talk all this smackety doo doll all you want to, okay? Like, I'm <laughs> telling you, me making three, it's it's the same. This is, this here's, it's the equivalent as if I would have, how much, how much is a realtor.com lead? It depends. It depends what zip code. I think it's going to be what, 20, 20, 30 bucks minimum. Yeah. It's like 20 to $30. That's probably the average price, but it depends on what zip code you're buying in. You know, if you you could, you could get like 50 realtor.com leads a month in like a lower zip code. Yeah. You know, like a few hundred bucks a month. And yeah. That's 50 a few hundred bucks. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, bro. You just said it was like 20, 30 bucks times 50. That's 1500 bucks. That's not a couple hundred. That's 1500. I mean, it depends like, yeah, but so it depends on what zip codes you're buying in. Right. 
You might buy some high ends. So some, so some could be four bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's my average. My got to pay to play, man. Yeah. You definitely got to pay. Listen, leads are expensive. You don't have to pay to play. That's what I'm Correct. getting at here. Correct. Correct. I agree. I agree. You don't have to at all. That's just the yeah. way I know how to do I'm all it. about, I'm all about like, once I realize that like leads are just humans and I can get humans for two cents a piece. I'm like, why am I going to spend any more than two cents for a human? <laughs> my, my, my advice as of lately has been, uh, everyone's like, oh, where do I get listings and bars? I'm like, pull out your iPhone, download Kobe, extract their entire iPhone list and just call the entire list of people on your phone. Why? You already have a relationship with them. They know who you are. They just have to be aware now that you sell real estate and boom, you got your buying your listing leads right there. No, I agree, man. I mean, listen, you can walk up to anyone and that person might be looking to buy, sell or know someone looking to buy or sell, right? I completely agree with that. Leads aren't the only thing that I do. That's just one way that I get business. You know, I'm also big into just, you know, I've always been posting on social media. When I started, when the day I started, I was posting something on social media every day just so that people saw that I was in real estate. And then that just started to grow, you know? Okay. Tell me about it. Like what, what happened? <laughs> so, I mean, I was, I was just posting, at, I started by just posting like realtor.com articles on my Facebook page. Mm. You know what I mean? Like realtor.com loves you, bro. <laughs> I know you give them all your money and you, 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 you share all their articles, man. They, they need to start paying you, man. or giving you a little bit of a little cut. <laughs> I agree. I agree. But, so you um, started, so you started sharing like realtor.com articles about like statistics of the market and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Anything. And then I, I put at any time I sold a home, I would post, you know, a sold post or a review that I got on Zillow. I would post the review and uh, you know, people just started to see what I was doing and you know, I just stayed in front of their face faces as much as possible. And uh, then they started contacting me just like my sphere of influence, just people, in my town or people that I grew up with that are looking to buy their first home, you know, started to reach out to me. Casey, what, what would be some social media tips you give to people who are, um, like I said, just starting out, they don't really know where, where to get to. They have no idea in regards to whether to use Instagram or, or Facebook, whatever it may be like, what, it, what what's worked for you that you could advise for new agents? Definitely create a Facebook page, you know, like uh, mine is just, Stopa Realty Group, right? When I first started, it was just Casey Thomas Stopa, a local realtor, um, you know, and post on that Facebook page every day. Start an Instagram page for yourself, um, you know, a real estate page separate from your personal page, or, or you could do it all in one. It's completely up to you. I just like to do it separate. Um, and just start posting content, you know, anything really, anything about real estate, just so that you can stay in front of people's faces. And when they think about, you they think about real estate so that in you know in a year two years three years they're looking to go buy or rent or sell they'll reach out to you i like it man i like it it's it, it's such a simple industry i think a lot of agents complicate it but yeah. at the end of the day ricky we meet a human we build What's a up? relationship we, we meet a human we build a relationship we get their contact info and we stay in touch with them that's it that's all it is, man. You can either pay to play or just play to stay. You feel me? It's like Atlantic City, right? No, let's do it. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Never been there. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. You've so been to Vegas have... though, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They know me over there. I walk in. They're like, Mr. Carruth. i like, yeah. They're, Are you going to put a thousand on black again? Oh, no. <laughs> no, sir. Not this time. What's, 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 what's your game? Poker. Poker, Texas, like Texas Hold'em. Hold yep. Oh, we gotta play one day. I can sit. I can sit there for literally like fourteen hours straight. Like, I mean, I, I mean, but it, it's it's like, you know, it's it's just I love it. Um, you know, but it's just like for me, it's the biggest waste of time in the world. You know, it's just like I really want to spend fourteen. I, I mean, I can sit there for a couple hours too, but it's not fun because like if you if you're gonna leave in like a couple hours or something, you feel rushed. You feel like you have to make quicker decisions. You're not really, you know, it's just not as fun if you know you can just sit there as long as you want to and just play it all out. Um. You know. Well, so li 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 listen, poker's like real estate in the sense that the guys like like us three who are in this for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years are going to have way better of an opportunity on our day-to-day. -day. Why? Because we're looking at this from a 20-year plan. The agent that gets into this and says, I need to make money the next six months, 
all the decisions are going to be rushed. And same in poker. If you go in there and you, you have two hours to play, you're going to start playing bad hands just because what? You want to get out of the game. So um, I love the analogy, man. That's that's real good right there. That's 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 good. I'm glad you spotted that. Yeah, that's a way to bring it back in there. Juan, this dude is straight. I'm telling you, man, <laughs> there's no way you're Latino, man. So <laughs> the thing is, is that you you like you're absolutely right man a lot like it's like agents give themselves a deadline like if i don't do this by this time then i failed or if i don't sell 20 properties my first year or if i don't sell something in the first six months and it's like why are you putting these limitations on yourself you don't know how much effort it's going to take to get to your first deal you know that's the problem um you know people are trying to say I'm going to put this much effort in and then this is what's going to happen. No, you're not the, the God of how much effort you have to put in to get a certain result. You have no idea. If you're not where you want to be, it's because you haven't put enough work in yet. You know, welcome to the club, man. Go do more. You know, go. You haven't even tipped the iceberg for how much work you got to put in to do that. You know what I mean? I think at the end of the day, the amount that an agent puts in is exactly what they're going to get back, not short-term, but long-term. The, all, all these calls that you're making right now, Casey, over the next two, three, four months, you may not even see an ROI for a year, but it's all good because you're still going to be here two years from now. You know, For the other agent, when he starts getting the calls coming in, heck, he already went out there, got a new job, so it makes a huge difference. It makes every difference in the world. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, listen, this was a great conversation, man. Casey, thanks for coming on and sharing, man. It was uh, really insightful and inspiring to hear how far you've come in just a really short time. I'm looking forward to seeing kind of where you take it from here. Cause I know you're going to do really big things, man. I could just see it, see it in you and what you've done and all that good stuff. So it's uh, it's super cool, man. I spent some time with you today. Definitely. Thank you guys very much for having me. Appreciate hey, it. Casey, where can everyone find you? Just uh, reach out if you have any questions. Uh, Instagram. My personal page is Casey Stopa, C-A-S-E-Y-S-T-O-P-A. And then Stopa Realty Group is my business page. Stopa Realty, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, awesome. cool. And right. uh, guys, if you're listening to this on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, one of those podcast channels, go to iTunes and give us a five star review. If you're on, if you're on YouTube, go ahead and click subscribe. Hit the like button. Show Casey some love here. Comment below. Let us know what market you're in and uh, how long you've been selling and what's going on with you and what we can do to help you. And you can always find me on Instagram. I answer all the DMs there. I'm Ricky Caruth. I got Juan Carlos B with me here and uh, we're out. We'll talk to you guys soon. We're out. Take care.